Janine. You are Janine, aren't you? <laughs> Let's have a look. O's and A's. Six O's. No A's. All those O's. You probably could have got an A. I wanted to Speaks, go to work. not brilliant, not too bad. Well, Janine, what's your present job like? I'm a secretary. A secretary or typist? I did start as a typist, but for the last six months I've been a secretary. To? To three of them, really. They share me. There's Mr Ashford, he's the office manager, and Mr Philby's Quite the a small place. A bit small. Friendly? Oh, it's friendly enough. Prospects? I don't think so. That's the trouble. Miss Lewis is secretary to the managing director and she's been there forever. And Mrs Bradford... So you the... want a job with better prospects? I want to change. So you'll take anything comparable? No, I do want prospects. I want more money. You're getting... 100. It's not bad, you know. You're what, 20? I'm saving to get married. Does that mean you don't want a long-term job, Janine? I might do. Because where did the prospects come in? No kids for a bit. Oh, no, no kids, not yet. So you won't tell them you're getting married? Had I better not? It would probably help. I'm not wearing a ring. We thought we wouldn't spend on a ring. Saves taking it off. I wouldn't take it off. There's no need to mention it when you go for an interview. What now, do Janine, ask? do you have a feel for any particular kind of company? I thought advertising. People often do think advertising. I do have a few vacancies, but I think they're looking for something glossier. You mean how I dress? I mean experience. I could dress different. I dress like this on purpose for where I am now. I have a marketing department here of a knitwear manufacturer. Knitwear. Marketing is near enough advertising. Secretary to the marketing manager. He is 35, married. I've sent him a girl before. She was very happy. Left to have a baby, so you won't want to mention marriage there. He's very fair, I think, good at his job. You won't have to nurse him along. 110, so that's better than you're doing now. I don't know. I have a fairly small concern here, father and two sons. You'd have more say, potentially, secretarial and reception duties. Only a hundred, but the job's going to grow with the concern, and then you'll be in at the top with new girls coming in Ooh. underneath you. What is it they do? Lampshades. This would be Just my first lampshades. choice for you. There's plenty of different kinds of lampshades. So we'll send you here, shall we, and the knitwear second choice. Are you free to go to an interview any day they call you? I'd like to travel. We don't have any foreign clients. You'd have to go elsewhere. Yes, I know. I don't really... I just mean... Does your fiancé want to travel? I'd like a job where I was here in London with him and everything. But now and then... I expect it's silly. Are there jobs like that? There's personal assistant to a top executive in a multinational. If that's the idea, you need to be planning ahead. Is that where you want to be in ten years? I might not be alive in ten years. Yes, but you will be. You'll have children. I can't think about ten years. You haven't got the speeds, anyway. So, I'll send you to these two, shall I? You haven't been to any other agency, just so we don't get crossed wires. Now, Janine. I want you to get one of these jobs, all right? If I send you, that means I'm putting myself on the line for you. Your presentation's okay, you look fine. Just be confident and go in there convinced that this is the best job for you and you're the best person for the job. If you don't believe it, they won't believe it. Do you believe it? I think you could make me believe it if you put your mind to it. Yes. All right. Straight away if you've got one really good. Here we are, Isabella. 
<laughs> Congratulations, my dear. Well, it's a step. It makes for a party. I haven't time for a holiday. I'd like to go somewhere exotic like you, but I can't get away. I don't know how you could bear to leave Hawaii. I did. I'd like to lie in the sun forever, except, of course, I can't bear to be still. I sent for my sister Henny to come and join me. I said, Henny will live here forever and help the natives. You can buy two sirloins of beef for what a pound of chops costs in Edinburgh. And Henny wrote back the dear that yes, she would come to Hawaii if I wished. But I said she had far better stay where she was. Henny was suited to life in Tobomori. Poor Henny. Do you have a sister? Yes, in fact. Henny was happy. She was good. I did miss its face, my own pet. But I couldn't stay in Scotland. I loathed the constant burk. Ah, oh, Legion! Marine! So excited when Marine I'm told me you were coming. I think it's drink while we wait for the others. I think a drink anyway. Mm. What a week! Mm. It was always the men who used to get so drunk. I'd be one of the maidens passing the sake. I've had sake. Small hot drink. Quite fortifying after a day in the wet. One night, my father proposed three rounds of three cups, which was novel. And then the emperor should have said three rounds of three cups. But he said three rounds of nine cups, so you can imagine. <laughs> then the emperor passed his sake cup to my father and said, Let the wild goose come to me this spring. Let the what? It's a literary allusion to a 10th century epic. His Majesty was it's the Emperor of Japan. I once well, met the Emperor of Morocco. But he wasn't old. Twenty nine. Oh, it's a long story. Twenty nine's an excellent age. Well, I was only fourteen at the time, and I knew he meant something, but I didn't know what. He sent me an eight-layered gown, and I sent it back. So when the time came, I did nothing but cry. My sin gowns were badly ripped. But even that morning when he left, I had to say he raped the scarlet lining and very heavily embroidered trousers. I already felt different about him. It made me uneasy. No, of course not, Maureen. I belong to him. It was what I was brought up for from a baby. I soon found I was sad if he stayed away. It was depressing, day after day, not knowing when he would come. I never enjoyed taking other women to him. I certainly never saw my father drunk. He was a clergyman. Oh, my father and was I a didn't very get religious man. I was Just before he died, he said to me, Serve His Majesty, be respectful. If you lose his favor, enter holy orders. But he meant stay in a convent, not go wandering round the country. The police were often vagrants, so why not a nun? You think I shouldn't? No, no, no I think you should. I think you should. I think you do what one I want. Gret. Good. Nijo? Gret. Hello, Gret. I know Griselda's going to be late, but should we wait for Joe? I tried to be a clergyman's daughter. Needlework, music, charitable schemes. I had a tumour removed from my spine and spent a great deal of time on the sofa. I studied metaphysical poets and technology. Oh, you I thought I enjoyed intellectual I come of a line of eight generations of poets. I had appointments. My and father taught me Latin. Latin. Although I was a girl, they didn't have really Latin at I my was school. So suited to manual work, cooking, washing, mending, riding horses. Oh, but I'm sure you're I didn't very read clever. Books, eh, Gret? A rough life in the open air. I can't say I enjoyed my rough life. What I enjoyed the most was being the Emperor's favorite Did and wearing have any horses servants to wear? Pig. Oh, Joan, thank God. We can order. Do you know everyone? We were just talking about learning Latin and being clever girls. <laughs> Joan was by way of an infant prodigy. Of course you were. 
What excited you when you were ten? Because angels are without matter, they are not individuals. Every angel is a species. There you are. my Latin but my father was the mainspring of my life and when he died I was so grieved I'll have the chicken please and of the soup. Of course you were grieved my father was saying his prayers and he dozed off in the sun so I touched his knee to rouse him I wonder what will happen he said and then he was dead before he'd finished the sentence. What a shock. If he died saying his prayers, he would have gone straight to heaven. Death is the return of all creatures to God. I shouldn't have woken him. Damnation only means ignorance of the truth. I was always attracted by the teachings of John the Scot, though he was inclined to confuse God and the world. me at the time. What I fancy is a rare stake. Gret. I am a member of the Church of England. I haven't been to church for years. Good work. I like Matt Christmas more than church attendance. Make that two steaks and a lot of potatoes. Rare. But I don't do good work, sorry. I have the past the please. Well, I family. tried, but oh dear. Henny did good works. The first half of my life was all a sin, and the second all Ah, oh, what about the starters? Soon. Well, your time was just a penance. I'll have the avocado. Nothing to start. Didn't you enjoy yeah, yourself? You. Yes, but I was very unhappy. And the wine members are past. I think that was a repentance. Well, I wonder. I might have just been homesick. Or angry. I'm not angry. Can no. we have some more bread? Not angry? Don't you get angry? I get angry. But what about? Yes, let's have two more frascati and some more bread, please. I tried to understand Buddhism when I was in Japan, but all this birth and death succeeding each other through eternities just filled me with the most profound melancholy. I do like something more active. You couldn't say I was inactive. I walked every day for 20 years. You don't mean walking. I mean I in the head. I found to copy five Mahayana sutras. I don't do think religious beliefs are something are. we have in My common. head was It's no good active. being active. My yeah. hair is sick. Heresy. She's calling the Church of England very, very, very attractive. Heresy. Heresy. I had never heard of Christianity. Never well, I'm not of a it. Christian, oh, and I have heard of it. We don't all have to believe the same. I knew coming to dinner with the Pope, we should keep off religion. I always enjoy a theological argument, but I won't try to convert you. I'm not a missionary. Anyway, I'm a heresy myself. There are some barbaric practices in the East. Barbaric? Amongst the lower classes. I wouldn't know. Well, theology always made my head ache. Who oh, good, some food. if I wasn't a nun. When my father died, I had only his majesty. So when I fell out of favor, I had nothing. Religion is a kind of nothing. That's what so I mean I dedicated what was the rest of me to nothing. Come on, Nijo, have some wine. Haven't you ever felt like that? Nothing will ever happen again. I am dead already. You all felt like you that. Your life was over, but it wasn't. You wish it was over. Hmm. Yes, when I first came to London, I sometimes... 
And when I got back from America, I did, but only for a few hours, not 20 years. When I was 40, I thought my life was over. Oh, I, I was pitiful. I didn't say I felt it for 20 years. I was sent on a cruise minute. for my health, and I felt even worse. <laughs> Pains in my bones, pins and needles in my hands, swelling behind the ears, and oh, stupidity. I shook all over, indefinable terror. And Australia seemed to me a hideous country. The acacia stank like drains. You were home I had a sick. photograph taken for Henny, but I said I wouldn't send it. My hair had fallen out, my clothes were crooked, I looked completely insane and suicidal. <laughs> so did I, exactly, dressed as a nun. I, I was wearing to go walking home. shoes for the but first home time. I had to go back so ten years. Dismal. I thought travelling cheered you both up. Dear, I'm not a cheerful person, Marine. I just arrived from Australia the to the Sandwich Isles. I fell in love with the sea. There were rats in the cabin and ants in the food, but suddenly it was like a new world. I woke up happy every morning, knowing there would be nothing to annoy me. No nervousness, no dressing. <laughs> Don't you like getting dressed? Mm. I adored my clothes. When I was chosen to give sake to his majesty's <laughs> brother, the Emperor Kamiyano, on his formal mm -hmm. visit, I wore raw silk pretty trousers and a seven-rayed gown in shades of red and two outer garments. So yes, yellow, so and I was very, very when I left green home. jacket. You dressed as a boy. Of course, of course. Oh, yeah, I was only yeah. 12. Oh, also, you women you weren't allowed alone. in the library. We wanted to study in Athens. No, not alone. I went with my friend. Ah, he was 16, but I thought I knew more science than he did and almost as much philosophy. Well, I always travelled as a lady, and I repudiated strongly any suggestion in the press that I was other than feminine. <laughs> I don't wear trousers in the no office. Great danger to all I could, but I don't. And, and you got away with it, Joan. I did then. But nobody noticed anything. They noticed I was a very clever boy. I and when I shared I a bed with my friend, that so was ordinary. Long. Two poor students in a lodging house. I think I forgot I was pretending. Rocky Mountain Jim, Mr. Nugent, showed me no disrespect. He found it interesting, I think, that I could make scones and also lasso cattle. Indeed, he declared his love for me, which was most distressing. What did he say? What did we you always say? I urged him to give first. up whiskey, but he oh, said it was too bella. late. He had lived alone in the mountains for many years. But did you? Mr. Nugent was a man that any woman might love, but none could marry. I came back to England. Did you write him a poem when you left? Did you never see him again? No, Snow never. on the mountain, my sleeves are wet with tears. In England, no tears, no snow. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I say never. One morning, very early in Switzerland, it was a year later, I had a vision of him as I last saw him in his trapper's clothes with his hair round his face. And that was the day I learnt later oh. he died with a bullet in his brain. Oh, Isabella! He just bowed to me and vanished. When your rubber dies, one of my lovers died as a beast of the We all got dead I lovers. I wasn't a nun. Not I me, was sorry. still at court, but he was a priest. 
And when he came to me, he dedicated his whole life to her. I quarreled with him. The teachings died, of John the Scot and her that our ignorance of God is the same as his ignorance of himself. He, died, he only knows what he, he creates die. because he creates everything he knows. But he himself is above being. Do you follow? No, but go on. I couldn't bear to think so that God shape would keep in the that the Neoplatonic ideas are indivisible really from most God. But I agree with John that the created world is essences derived from ideas which derive from God. As Dennis the Areopagite said, the pseudo Dennis. First we give God a name, then deny it. In then reconcile the contradiction by looking beyond those terms. Sorry, what? Dennis said what? Well, we disagreed about it. We quarreled. And the next day he was ill. I was so annoyed with him all the time I was learning him. I kept going over the arguments, arguments in my opinion. mind. Matter is not a means of knowing the essence. The source of the species is the idea. But then I realized he'd never understand my arguments again. That night he died. <laughs> John the Scot held that the individual disintegrates and I there is no personal immortality. <laughs> it was yearning to save him that I felt. So what did you do? First, I decided to stay a man. I was used to it. And I wanted to devote my life to learning. Do you know why I went to Rome? Italian men didn't have beards. <laughs> <laughs> the loves of my life were Henny, my own pet. And my dear husband, the doctor, who nursed Henny in her last illness. I knew it would be terrible when Henny died, but I didn't know how terrible. I felt half of myself had gone. How could I go on my travels without that sweet soul waiting at home for my letters? It was Dr. Bishop's devotion to her in her last illness that made me decide to marry him. He and Henny had the same sweet character. I had not. I thought his majesty had sweet character because when he found out about Ariaki, he was so kind. But really, it was because he no longer cared for me. He even sent me out to a man who had been pursuing me. I did wish he lay awake on the other the side stack. of the screens and to listen. I tried very hard to cope with the ordinary drudgery of life. I was ill again with carbuncles on the spine and nervous prostration. I ordered a tricycle. That was my idea of adventure then. <laughs> and John himself fell ill with erysipelas and anemia. I began to love him with my whole heart, but it was too late. He was a skeleton with transparent white hands. I wheeled him on various seafronts in a bath chair, and he faded and left me. There was nothing in my life. The doctor said I had gout. There my was nothing heart was in much my affected. life. Nothing without the emperor's favor. The Empress had always been my enemy, Maureen. She said I had no right to wear three day at gowns. There was nothing but in I my was life the except my studies. My I was obsessed with pursuit of the I truth. I taught at the Greek school in Rome, which St. Augustine had made famous. I was poor, I worked hard, I spoke apparently brilliantly, I was still very young, I was a stranger, suddenly I was quite famous. I was everyone's favorite. Huge crowds came to hear me. The day after they made me cardinal, I fell ill and lay two weeks without speaking, full of terror and regret. But yes, then I got up, determined to go on. I was seized yes, again with a desperate yes, longing for the on. absolute. I sat in Tobermory amongst tennis flowers and sewed a complete outfit in Jaeger flannel. <laughs> I was well, but I six didn't years die. old. I left on foot. Nobody saw me go. For the next 20 years, I walked through Japan. Pope Leo died and I was chosen. All right, then. I would be Pope. I would know God. I would know everything. I determined to leave my grief behind and set off for Tibet. Magnificent, all of you. We need some more wine, please. Two bottles, I think. 
Griselda isn't even here yet, and I want to drink a toast to you all. To yourself, surely, Marlene. Yes, Marlene. Exactly, yes, Marlene. Well, it's not Pope, but it is managing director. And you find oh, 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 yes, oh, it's oh, 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 to our courage and the way we've changed our lives and our extraordinary achievements. <laughs> Such adventures! We were crossing a mountain pass at 7,000 feet. The cook was all to pieces. The muleteer suffered fever and snow blindness. But even though my spine was agony, I managed very well. Wonderful! Once I was ill for four months and I had over to eat. Nobody to offer a horse to Buddha. I had to live for myself and I did live. Of course you did. It was far worse returning to Tobamori. I always felt dull when I was stationary. Yes, that's that's exactly why I could never stay sight. anywhere. A shrine by the beach, <laughs> the one shining mm. on the sea. The goddess had vowed to save all living things. I had she would thought even save the fishes. No, I was I had full of hope. would speak to me directly, but of course he knew I was a woman. But nobody else <laughs> even suspected. In the end, I did take a lover again. Oh, 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 my Chamberlain. There's such a lot of servants when you're Pope. The food's very good. And I realized I did know the truth because whatever the Pope says, that's true. What was he like? He could keep a secret. So you did know everything. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed being Pope. I consecrated bishops and let people kiss my feet. I received the King of England when he came to submit to the church. Unfortunately, there were earthquakes and some village reported it had rained blood. And in France, there was a plague of giant grasshoppers, but I don't think that would have been my fault. I was steady and ground up their eyes to make the lenses of cameras. And so they and were shouting, the child eater, child eater. Some people tried to sell girl babies to Europeans for cameras or stew. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have lived to an old age like Theodora of Alexandria, who lived as a monk. She was accused by a girl. But tell us what happened to your baby. The I had child. some babies. And didn't you think of getting rid of it? Wouldn't that be a worse sin than having it? But if I the child is about as bad as possible, <laughs> but I wouldn't have known how to get rid of it. Other popes had children, surely. They didn't give birth to them. Well, you were a woman. Exactly. Women, children, and lunatics can't be popes. So the only thing to do was you to get to have it, it adopted somehow. secretly. But I didn't know what was happening. I thought I was getting fatter, but then I was eating more and sitting about. The life of a pope is quite luxurious. I don't think I'd spoken to a woman since I was twelve. The Chamberlain was the one who realized. And by then it was too late. Oh, I didn't want to pay attention. It was easier to do nothing. But you had to plan for having it. You had to say you were ill and go away. That's what I should have done, I suppose. Did you want them to find out? I, too, was often in embarrassing situations. There's no need for a scandal. My first child was His Majesty's, which unfortunately died. But my second was Akibono's. 
I was 17. He was in a rub with me when I was 13. He was very upset when I had to go to the emperor. It was very romantic. A lot of poems. Now, his majesty hadn't been near me for two months, so he thought I was four months pregnant when I was really six. So when I reached the ninth month, I announced I was seriously was. ill, and Akibono announced he had gone on a religious retreat. He held me round the waist and lifted me up as the baby was born. He cut the cord with a short sword, wrapped the baby in white, and took it away. It was only a girl, but I was sorry to lose it. Then I told the emperor that the baby had miscarried because of my illness, and there you are. The danger was past. But Nicho, I wasn't used to having a woman's body. So what happened? I, I didn't know, of course, that it was near the time. It was rogation day. There was always a procession. I was on the horse dressed in my robes and a cross was carried in front of me and all the cardinals were following and all the clergy of Rome and a huge crowd of people. Total Pope. <laughs> we set off from St. Peter's to go to St. John's. I had felt a slight pain earlier. I thought it was something I'd eaten and then it came back and came back more often. I thought when this is over I'll go to bed. There were still long gaps when I felt perfectly all right and I didn't want to attract attention to myself and spoil the ceremony. Then I suddenly realized what it must be. I had to last out till I could get home and hide. Then something changed. My breath started to catch. I couldn't plan things properly anymore. We were in a little street that goes between St. Clement's and the Colosseum, and I just had to get off the horse and sit down for a moment. Great waves of pressure were going through my body. I heard sounds like a cow lowing. They came out of my mouth. <laughs> Far away, I heard people screaming, The Pope is ill! The Pope is dying! And the baby just slid out onto the road. Oh, oh, how embarrassing! Oh, it was a stage. One of the cardinals said the Antichrist and fell over in a faint. <laughs> <laughs> so what did they do? They weren't best pleased. They took me by the feet and dragged me out of town and stoned me to death. Joan, how horrible. I don't really remember. And the child died too? Oh, yes, I think so. Yes. I never had any children. I was very fond of horses. I saw my daughter once. She was three years old. She wore a pram red small three Birdie column. was my favorite. Wife. A little I Indian a bay mare I rode on the Rocky Mountains. Everyone thought I was just a visitor. She was being brought up carefully so she could be sent to the Paris like I was. Legs of iron. And always cheerful. And such a pretty face. If a stranger led her, she reared up like a bronco. I never saw my third child after he was born, the son of Ariaki, the priest. Ariaki held him on his wrap the day he was born and talked to him as if he could understand and cried. My fourth child was Ariaki's too. Ariaki died before he was born. I didn't want to see anyone. I stayed alone in the hills. It was a boy again, my third son. But oddly enough, I felt nothing for him. How many children did you have, Gret? Ten. Whenever I came back to England, I felt I had so much to atone for. Henny and John were so good. 
I did no good in my life. I spent years in self-gratification. So I hurled myself into committees. I lectured the Young Women's Christian Association on thrift. I nursed the people of Tobermory in the epidemic of influenza. I talked and talked, explaining how the East was corrupt and vicious. My travels must do good to someone beside myself. I wore myself out with good causes. Oh, God. Why are we all so miserable? The procession never went down that street again. <laughs> they rerouted it specially. Yes, they had to go all round to avoid it, and they introduced a pierced chair. <laughs> a pierced chair? Yes, a chair made out of solid marble with a hole in the seat. Your and it was in the chapel of the Saviour, and after he was elected, the Pope had to sit in it. Oh, 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 No, no, don't go. Oh, no, no, really, I'm not hungry. Well, have some pudding. I never eat pudding. Griselda, I hope you're not hungry. We're having pudding. I am getting nice and fat. Well, if everyone is, I don't mind. Now, who do you know? <laughs> Zelda's life is like a fairy story, except it starts with marrying the prince. Oh, so oh. Really a Molly. Well, everyone for miles around is his liege, and he's absolute lord of life and death, and you were the poor but beautiful peasant girl, and he wished you off. Oh, <laughs> I was brought up in court circles, and it was still a shock. Had you ever seen him before? I'd seen him riding by. We all had. And he'd seen me in the fields with the sheep. He I just rode up while you were minding the sheep and sheep. asked you to I marry him. him. No, no, it was on the wedding day. I was waiting outside the door to see the procession. Everyone wanted him to get married, so they'd been there to look after us when he died. And at last he announced a day for the wedding. But nobody knew who the bride was. We yes. thought she must be a foreign princess. We were longing to see her. Then the carriage stopped outside our cottage, but we couldn't see the bride anywhere. And he came in and spoke to my father. And your father told you to serve the prince? My father could hardly speak. The Marquis said it wasn't an order. I could say no. But if I said yes, I must always obey him in everything. That's when you should have suspected. 
But of course the wife must obey her husband. I sought to obey And of course God, I of must course, obey the Marquis. But why bother to mention it at all? To go he got a thing about it, that's why. I'd rather obey the Marquis than a boy from the village. Yes, that's a point. I never obeyed anyone. They all obeyed me. <laughs> and what did you wear? He didn't make you get married in your own clothes. That would be perverse. Oh, he you had bet. ladies with him who undressed me. And they had a white silk dress and jewels for my hair. And at first he seemed perfectly normal. Marlene, you're always so critical of him. But come of on, Of course he was normal. Griselda. He was very he took kind. your baby. Walter found it hard to believe I loved him. He couldn't believe I would always obey him. He had to prove it. I don't think Walter likes women. I'm sure he loved me, Marlene, all the time. He just had a funny way of showing it. was it. hard for him, too. How do you mean he took away your baby? Was it a boy? No, the first one was a girl. Even so, it's hard when they take it away. Did you see it at all? Oh, yes, she was six weeks old. Much better to do it straight away. Why did your husband take the child? He said all the people hated me because I was just one of them. And now I had a child, they were restless. So he had to get rid of the child to keep them quiet. But he said he wouldn't snatch her. I had to agree and obey and give her. So when I was feeding her, a man came in and took her away. I thought he was going to kill her even before he was out of the room. But you let him take her. You didn't struggle. I asked him to give her back so I could kiss her. And I asked him to bury her where no animals could dig her up. Oh, it was Walter's child to do what he liked. But Walter Surely was murders. I had promised. I can't stand this. I'm going for a pee. No, I understand. Of course you had to. He was your wife. And were you in favor after that? Oh, yes, we were very happy together. We never spoke about what had happened. I can see you were doing what you thought was your duty. But didn't it make you ill? No, I was very well, thank you. And you had another child? Not for four years, but then I did, yes, a boy. Oh, a boy! Yes, so he was, please. I kept my son till he was two years old. A peasant's grandson. Made the people angry. Walter explained. But surely he wouldn't kill his children. It true. Walter would never give in to the people. He wanted to see if I loved him enough. He killed his children to was see if you loved him enough. Was it the now. second time or harder? It was always easy, because I always knew I would do what he said. didn't have any more children. Oh, no, no more. It was 12 years till he tested me again. So whatever did you do this time? He My poor away. John, I never He said the people him wanted him to marry someone else who gave him an heir, and he got special permission from the Pope. So I said I'd go home to my father. I came with nothing, Better so I went. Better to leave if your master doesn't want you. Clothes. He let me keep a slip so he wouldn't be shamed, and I walked home barefoot. My father came out in tears. Everyone was crying except me. At least your father wasn't dead. Well, it I had had no relief leave to come home. I loved to see Henry's sweet face again. Oh, yes, I was perfectly content. And quite soon he sent for me again. I don't think I would have gone. But he told me to come. I had to obey him. He wanted me to help prepare his wedding. He was getting married to a young girl from France. It's and always hard taking him another woman. I didn't like live a woman's them. life. I don't understand it. The girl was 16 and far more beautiful than me. I could see why he loved her. Oh, God, I can't brother. bear it. I want some coffee. Six coffees, six brandies. They all Not went brandies. into the feast I prepared. 
and he stayed behind and put his arms around me and kissed me. Oh, I felt half asleep with a shock. And he said, this is your daughter and your son. Hmm? Yes. What? Oh, I see. You got them back? I did think it was remarkably barbaric to kill them, but you learn not to say anything. Walt so is a monster. Up secretly what, you angry? what did you do? Well, I fainted. Then I cried and kissed the children. <laughs> Everyone was making a fuss them? of me. What? Did you appear anything for the children? Of course, I loved them. So you forgave him and lived with him? He suffered so much all those years. And he had the same sweet nature. So they dressed you again? Cloth of gold. I can't forgive anything. You really are exceptional, Griselda. Nobody gave me back my children. I can never be like Henny. I was always so busy in England, a kind of busyness I detested. The very presence of people exhausted my emotional reserves. I could not be like Henny, however I tried. I tried and was as ill as could be. The doctor suggested a steel net to support my head. The weight of my own head was too much for my diseased spine. Don't it cry. is dangerous to put my oneself in depressing circumstances. So Why should I do it? Yes, but don't cry. They wouldn't let me into the palace when he was dying. I hid in the room with his coffin. Then I couldn't find where I'd left my shoes. I ran after the funeral procession in bare feet. I couldn't keep up. When I got there, it was over. A few wisps of smoke in the sky that was all that was left of him. What I want to know is if I'd still been at court, would I have been allowed to wear for the morning? I'm sure you would. Why do you say that? You don't know anything about it. Would I have been allowed to wear for the morning? How can people live in this dim, pale island and wear our hideous clothes? I cannot and will not live the life of a lady. I'll tell you something that made me angry. I was 18 at the full moon ceremony. They make a special rice gruel and stir it with their sticks and beat their women across the ruins so they'll have sons and not daughters. So the emperor beat us all very hard. What a sword! That's not it, Marin. That's normal. What made us angry, he told his attendants they could beat us too. Well, they had a wonderful time. I'd like so another Rita brandy. So Lady and I made a plan. Don't and the ladies all hid in his rooms. And Lady Mashimutsu stood guard at the door with a stick. And when His Majesty came in, Genki seized him, and I beat him with a stick until he cried out and promised he would never order anyone to hit us again. Afterwards, there was a terrible fuss. The nobles were horrified. We wouldn't even dream of stepping on your majesty's shadow. And I had hit him with a stick. Yes! I hit him with a stick!
There's a river and a bridge and houses. This place is on fire like when the soldiers come. There's a big devil and he's sat on the roof with a big hole in his ass and he's scooping stuff out of it with a big ladle and it's falling down on us and it's money. So a lot of the women stop and get some. But most of us is fighting the devil. There's lots of little devils our size, and we get them down all right, and we <coughs> give them a beating. There's lots of funny creatures round your feet you don't like to look like. Rats and lizards and nasty things. A bum with a face and a fish with legs and faces on things that don't have faces on, but they don't hurt. You, you know. You just keep going. Well, we'd had worse, you see. We'd had the Spanish. We'd all had family killed. My big son die on a wheel. Birds eat him. My baby, a soldier run her through with a sword. I'd had enough. I oh, was mad. I hate the bastards. Come out my front door that morning and shout to my neighbours, come out. And I said, come on, we are going where the evil come from and pay the bastards out. And they all came out just as they was oh, in the yeah. baking or washing and we push down the street and the ground opens up and we go through a mouth into a street just like ours, but in hell. I've got a sword in my hand from somewhere and, and, and a basket and I fill it with gold cups they drink out of down there. Oh, you just keep running on and yeah. fighting. Yeah. You don't yeah. stop yeah. for yeah. nothing. Yeah. Oh, we give them yeah. devil yeah. such yeah. Shall I tell you something? 
Do you want to watch The Exterminator? Sucks, innit? I can get into X's. Shall I tell you something? We'll go with something else. We'll go to Ipswich. What's on the Odeon? She won't let me, will she? Don't tell her. I've no money. I'll pay. She'll moan though, won't she? I'll ask her for if you like. Well, I've no money. I don't want you to pay. I'll ask her. She don't like you. I've still got three pound birthday money. Did she say she don't like me? I'll go by myself then. <laughs> Your mum don't let you, I gotta take you. She won't know. You'd be scared who'd sit next to you. No, I wouldn't. She does like me anyway. Tell me then. Tell you what? She she doesn't like. Well, I don't like her, it's a tough shit. Angie! Angie, I know you're out there. I'm not coming out after you. You come in here. Last night when I was in bed, I've been thinking yesterday, could I make things move, you know? Make things move by thinking about them without touching them. Last night I was in bed and suddenly a picture fell down off the wall. What picture? My gran, that picture, not the poster. The photograph in the frame. Had you done something to make it fall down? I must have done. Who are you thinking about it? Not about it, but about something. Well, I don't think that's very good. You know the kitten? Which one? There only is one, the dead one. What about it? I heard it last night. Where? Out here in the dark. What if I left you out here in the dark all night? You couldn't. I'd go home. You couldn't? I'd go no, home. No, you couldn't. Not if I said. I could. Well, then you wouldn't see anything. You'd just be ignorant. I can see in the daytime. Oh, you can. You can hear it in the daytime. I don't want to hear it. You're scared, that's all. I'm not scared of anything. You're scared of blood. It's not the same kitten anyway. You just heard no cat. You don't know you what I heard or what I saw. Cat. You don't know nothing because you're just a baby. You're sitting on me. Why am I here, you silly Stupid slag? fucking cow, I hate I you. I don't care if you do. You're horrible. I'm going to kill my mother and you're going to watch. I'm not playing. You're scared of blood. There, see? I got me own blood, so. Now I'm a cannibal. I might turn into a vampire now. That picture wasn't nailed that bright. You'll have to do that when I get mine. I don't have to. You're scared. I'll do it. I might do it. I don't have to just because you say. I'll be sick on you. I don't care if you are sick on me. I don't mind sick. I don't mind blood. If I don't get away from here, I'm gonna die. I'm going home. Can't go through the house, she'll see you. I won't tell her. Oh, great. Fine. I'll say I was by myself. 
I tell her you're at my house and I'm going there to get you. She knows I'm here, stupid. Then why can't I go through the house? Because I said not. My mum don't like you anyway. Well, I don't want her to like me. She's a slag. She is not. She does it with everyone. She does not. You don't even know what it is. Yes, I do. Tell me then. I get all the school clever clogs. It's on the television. You haven't done it. How do you know? Cos I know you haven't. Well, you know wrong then, because I have. Who with? I'm not telling you. You haven't with. anyway. How do you know? Who with? I'm not telling you. You said you told me everything. Well, I was lying, wasn't I? Who with? You can't tell me who with, because you've never... <laughs> You there, Angie? Kit, you there, Kitty? You want a cup of tea? I've got some chocolate biscuits. <laughs> Come on now, put the kettle on. You want a chocky bicky, Angie? <laughs> Fucking rotten little cow, you can stay there and die. I love the back door. <laughs> When there's a war, where's the safest place? Nowhere. New Zealand is, my mum said. Your skin's burned right off. Should we go to New Zealand? I'm not stony. Should we go to New Zealand? You're not old enough. You're not old enough. I'm old enough to get married. You don't want to get married. No, but I'm old enough. I'd find out where they were going to drop it and stand right in the place. You couldn't find out. Spect them walking around with your skin dragging on the ground. Would you like walking around with your you skin dragging on the ground? You couldn't find out, stupid. It's a secret. Where are you going? I'm not telling you. Why? It's a secret. But you tell me all your secrets. Not the true secrets. Yes, you do. No, I don't. I want to go somewhere away from the war. Just forget the war. I can't. You have to. It's so boring. I remember it at night. Oh, I'm going to do something else anyway. What? Angie, come on. Angie. It's a true secret. Can't be worse than the kitten. And killing your mother and the war. Well, I'm not telling you, so you can die for all I care. My mother says there's something wrong with you playing with someone my age. She says, why haven't you got friends your own age? Because people your own age know there's something funny about you. She says you're a bad influence. She says she's going to speak to your mother. You say you're a liar. She said it, not me. Say you eat shit. You can't make me. I don't care. I'm leaving anyway. <laughs> Go on, then. You will wake up one morning and find I've gone. Good. I'm not telling you when. Go on, then. Sorry I hurt you. I'm tired. Do you like me? I don't know. You do like me. I'm going home. No, you're not. I'm tired. Oh, 
şey olsa iyi. Şu gemi çakla biske. Tell me where you're going. Well, sit down. Go on then. Swear. Swear. I'm going to London. See my aunt. And what? Well, that's it. I see my aunt all the time. I don't see my aunt. What's so special? Well, it is special. She's special. Why? She is. Why? She is. Why? My mother hates her. <laughs> Why? Because she does. Perhaps she's not very nice. She is nice. How do you know? Because I know her. You said you never see her. I saw her last year. You saw her. Did I? Oh, never mind. I remember her, that aunt. What's so special? She gets people jobs. What's so special? I think I'm my aunt's child. I think my mother's really my aunt. Why? Because she goes to America. Now shut up. <laughs> I've been to London. Now give us a cuddle and shut up because I'm sick. <laughs> I'm sitting on my arm. Come on. Oh, hello. Tom, you ain't home. We want to go to the Odeon. What time? I don't know. What's on? I don't know. Don't know much, do you? Is that all right, then? Angie's got to clean her room first. No, I don't. Yes, you do. It's a big story. Well, I'm not. Well, then you're not going, I don't care. Well, I am going. You've no money, have you? Kit's paying, Nanny. No, no, she's not. I'll help you with your room. That's nice. Oh, you won't. You just wait. I'm not hurrying, you just wait here. Air schooling. All right. What are you now? Third year. Second year. Your mum says you're good at English. Maybe Angie should have stayed on. She didn't like it. Well, I didn't like it. Look at me. If your face fits the school, it's going to fit other places too. Will make no difference to Angie. She's not going to get a job when jobs are hard to get. I'll be sorry for anyone in charge of her. <laughs> she better get married. Don't know who'd have her mind. She's the sort of girl might never leave home. What do you want to be when you grow up, Kit? Physicist. What? Nuclear physicist. Whatever for? I could. I'm clever. I know you're clever, Pip. <sighs> I 
make a cup of tea. Looks like it's gonna rain. Don't you have friends your own age? Yeah. Well then. I'm old for my age. And Angie's simple, is she? She's not simple. I love Angie. She's clever in her own way. You can't stop me. I don't want to. You can't so. Don't be cheeky, Kitty. She's always kind to little children. She's coming, so you better leave me alone. What do you put that on for? Have you done your room? You can't clean your room in there. I looked in the cupboard and it was there. Of course it was there. It's meant to be there. Is that why it's a surprise? Finding something in the right place? I think she's surprised, wouldn't you, Kit? Finding something in her room in the right place. I decided to wear it. Not today. Why? To clean your room? You're not going to the pictures till you've done your room. You can put your dress on after if you like. Have you done your room? You're not getting out of it, you know. Angie, let's go. She's not going till she's done her room. It's starting to rain. Oh, come on, come on. Angie, hurry up and do your room and then you can go to the cinema with Kit. Oh, it's wet. Look, come on. Look up the time in the paper. Is your mum and own Kit? I put on this dress to kill my mother. Oh, she thought you'd do it with a brick. Can't kill people with a brick. Well, you didn't. So. in West Sussex. He exhibits. You what? His wife was visiting her mother. It was like living together. Lucky you never said. He rang on Saturday morning. Lucky you were free. That's what I told him. Did you hear? Have you ever seen a really beautiful rose garden? I don't like flowers. I like Marilyn swimming pools. Esther's baby. They're all called after birds. My well, friend's late. Celebrating all weekend, I bet you. I'd call a rose Elvis or John Conti. Hiding yet? If he is, he'll be bleeping us with a problem. Howard can just hang on to himself. Howard's really cut up. Howard thinks because he's a fella, the job was his as of right. Oh, Marling's got far more balls than Howard, and that's that. Poor little bugger. He'll live. He'll live on. I wouldn't mind a change of air myself. Serious? Never been a staying put lady. Past is new. So, who's the pirate? Nothing definite. Inquiries? There's always inquiries. I think I've got bad breath if they stop being inquiries. Most of them can't afford me. Or you? I'm all right for the time being, unless I go to Australia. There's a lot of room upwards. Marlene filled it up. Good luck to her. This is some prospects money-wise. You can but ask. We always but ask. So, what have we got? I've got a Mr Holden I saw last week. Any use? 
Bushy. Bit of a cowboy. Good looker. Good dresser. High flyer. That's his general idea, certainly, but I'm not sure he's got it up there. Because perhaps six high flyers have only seen two and a half. He's making a bomb on the road, but he thinks it's time for an office. I sent him to YBM, but he didn't get it. Bristol's on the road. He's not over bright. Can he handle an office? Provided his secretary can punctuate, he should go far. Bear Bristol in mind, then I might pop my head round the door. Oh, I've got that poor little nerve. I never should have said I could help. Tender heart me. Tender like old boots. How old? Yes, well, 45. Say no more. He knows his place. He's not after calling himself a manager. Just a poor little bod wants a better commission and a bit of sunshine. Don't we all? We've got to relocate. He's got a bungalow in Dimchurch. And his wife says? The lady wife wouldn't care to relocate. She's going through the change. It's his funeral. Don't waste your time. No, I don't waste a lot. Good weekend, you? You could say. Which one? One Friday. One Saturday. Aye, aye. Sunday night I watched telly. Which of them do you like best, really? Sunday night was best. I liked the Oval team. Holden, Barker, Gardner, Duke. But lady here thinks she can sell. Taking her on. She's had some jobs. Services. No, quite heavy stuff. Electric. Tough burn like us. Could do with a few more round here. There's nothing going here. No, but I always want the tough ones when I see them. Hang on to them. Well, I think we're plenty. Derek asked me to marry him again. He doesn't know when he's beaten. I told him I'm not going to play house, not even in Ascot. Mind you, you could play house. If I chose to play house, I'd play house ace. You could marry him and go on working. I could go on working and not marry him. Morning, ah. ladies. <laughs> Gobby, gobby, gobby. We're tactfully not mentioning your late. Fucking chew. We heard that one. We used that one. It's the top executive doesn't come in as early as the poor working girl. Pass the sugar and shut your face, Pat. Well, I'm delighted. Howard's looking sick. Howard is sick. He's got ulcers and heart, he told me. He'll have to stop then, won't he? Stop what? Smoking, drinking, shouting. Working. Well, working. <laughs> We're just looking through the day. I'm doing some of Pam's ladies. They've been piling up while she's away. Half a dozen little girls and an arts graduate who can't type. I spent the whole weekend at his place in Sussex. She fancies his rose garden. I had to lie down in the back of the car so the neighbours wouldn't see me go in. You're kidding. It was funny. Fuck that for a joke. It was funny. Anyway, they'd see you in the garden. The garden has extremely high walls. I think I'll tell the wife. Like hell. She might leave them and you could have the rose garden. The minute it's not a secret, I'm out on my ear. I don't know why you bother. Bit of fun. I think it's time you went to Australia. I think it's pushy Mr. Holden time. If you've any really pretty bastards, Marlene, I want some for Crystal. I might have one this afternoon. This morning it's all Pam's secretarial. Not long now and you'll be upstairs watching over us all. Do you feel bad about it? I don't like coming second. Who does? <laughs> We'd rather it was you than Howard. We're glad for you, aren't we now? Oh, yeah. Aces. Now, Louise, hello. I have your details here. You've been very loyal to the one job, I see. Yes, I have. 21 years is a long time in one place. I feel it is. I feel it's time to move on. And you're what age now? I'm in my early 40s. Exactly. 46. It's not necessarily a handicap. Well, it is, of course. We have to face that. But it's not necessarily a disabling handicap. Experience does count for something. I hope so. Now, between ourselves, is there any trouble, any reason why you're leaving that wouldn't appear on the form? Nothing like that. Like what? Nothing at all. No long-term understandings come to a sudden end, making for an insupportable atmosphere. I've always completely avoided anything like that at all. No personality clashes with your immediate superiors or inferiors? I've always taken care to get on very well with everyone. I only ask because it can affect the reference and it also affects your motivation. I want to be quite clear why you're moving on. So I take it the job itself no longer satisfies you. 
Is it the money? It's partly the money. It's not so much the money. Nine thousand is very respectable. Have you dependents? No, no dependents. Uh, my mother died. So why are you making a change? Other people make changes. But why are you now, after spending most of your life in the one place? There you are. I've lived for that company. I've given my life, really, you could say, because I haven't had a great deal of social life. I've worked in the evenings. I haven't had office entanglements for the very reason you just mentioned. And when you are committed to your work, you don't move in many other circles. I had management status from the age of 27, and you'll appreciate what that means. I've built up a department, and there it is. It works extremely well, and I feel I'm stuck there. I have spent 20 years in middle management. I have seen young men who I trained go on in my own company or elsewhere to hire things. Nobody notices me. I don't expect it. I don't attract attention by making mistakes. Everybody takes it for granted. My work is perfect. They will notice me when I go. They'll be sorry, I think, to lose me. They'll offer me more money, of course. I will refuse. They will see when I've gone what I was doing for them. If they offer you more money, you won't stay. No, I won't. Are you the only woman? Apart from the girls, of course, yes. There was one. She was my assistant. It was the only time I took on a young woman assistant. I always had my doubts. I don't care greatly for working with women. I think I pass as a man at work. But I did take on this young woman. Her qualifications were excellent, and she did well. She got a department of her own and left the company for a competitor where she's now on the board, and good luck to her. She has a different style. She's a new kind of attractive, well-dressed... I don't mean I don't dress properly, but there is a kind of woman who's 30 now who grew up in a different climate. They're not so careful. They take themselves for granted. I have had to justify my existence every minute, and I have done so. I have proved... Well... Let's face it, vacancies are ones where you'll be in competition with younger men. But there are companies that will value your experience enough that you'll be in with a chance. There are also fields that are easier for a woman. There is a cosmetic company here where your experience might be relevant. It's eight and a half. I don't know if that appeals. I've proved I can earn money. It's more important to get away. I feel it's now or never. I sometimes think... You shouldn't talk too much at an interview. I don't. I don't normally talk about myself. I know very well how to handle myself in an office situation. I only talk to you because it seems to me this is different. It's your job to understand me, surely. You ask the questions. I think I understand you sufficiently. Well, good. That's good. Do you drink? Certainly not. I'm not a teetotaler. I, I, I think that's very suspect. It's seen as being an alcoholic if you're a teetotal. What do you mean? I don't drink. Why? I drink. I don't. Good for you. Hello. Have you an appointment? It's me. I've come. What? It's not Angie. It was hard to find this place. I got lost. How did you get past the receptionist, the girl on the desk? Didn't she try to stop you? What desk? Never mind. I just walked in. I was looking for you. Well, you found me. Yes. So, where's your mum? Are, are you up in town for the day? Not really. Sit down. You feel all right? Yes, thank you. So, where's Joyce? She's at home. Did you come up on a school trip then? I've left school. 
Did you come up with a friend? No, there's just me. You came by yourself? That's fun. What have you been doing? Shopping, Tower of London? No, I just come here. I come to you. That's very nice of you to think of paying your auntie a visit. There's not many nieces make that the first port of call. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Tea, orange? No, thank you. Do you feel all right? Yes, thank you. Are you tired from the journey? Yes, I... I'm tired from the journey. You sit there for a bit, then. How's Joyce? She's all right. Same as ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you've picked a day when I'm rather busy. If there's ever a day when I'm not, or I'd take you out to lunch and we could go to Madame Tussauds. We could go shopping. What time do you have to be back? Have you got a day return? No. So what train are you going back on? I came on the bus. So what bus are you going back on? Are you staying the night? Yes. Who are you staying with? Do you want me to put you up for the night? Is that it? Yes, please. I haven't got a spare bed. I can sleep on the floor. I can sleep on the sofa. Yes, please. I do think Joyce might have phoned me. It's like her. So this is where you work, is it? It's where I've been working for the last two years, but I'm going to move into another office. It's lovely. My new office is nicer than this. There's just one big desk in it for me. Can I see it? Not now. No, there's someone else in it now. But he's leaving at the end of next week, and I'm going to do his job. Is that good? Yes, that's very good. Are you going to be in charge? Yes, I am. I knew you would be. How did you know? I knew you'd be in charge of everything. Not quite everything. You will be. Well, we'll see. Can I see it next week, then? Will you still be here next week? Yes. Don't you have to go home? No. Why not? It's all right. Is it all right? Yes, don't worry about it. Does Joyce know where you are? Of course she does. Well, does she? Don't worry about it. How long are you planning to stay with me, then? You know when you came to see us last year? Yes, that was nice, wasn't it? That was the best day of my whole life. So how long are you planning to stay? Don't you want me? Yes, yes, I just wonder. I won't stay if you don't want me. No, of course you can stay. I'll sleep on the floor. I won't be any bother. Don't get upset. I'm not. I'm not. Don't worry about it. Oh. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. Can I help you? Excuse me bursting in on you like this, but I have to talk to you. I, I'm sorry, I'm engaged at the moment. You I'm Ruth McKidd, Howard's wife. You don't recognize me, but we did meet. I remember you, of course, but yes, you wouldn't. Of course, remember. Mrs. Kidd. I'm sorry, we did meet. Howard's about somewhere, I expect. Have you looked in his office? Howard's oh, not about, no. I'm afraid it's you I've come to see if I could have a minute or two. I do have an appointment in five minutes. This won't take five minutes. I'm very sorry, but it is a matter of some urgency. Well, of course. What can I do? I just wanted to chat, an informal chat. It's not something I can simply... I'm sorry if I'm interrupting your work. I know office work isn't like housework, which no, is all uh, interruptions. No, this is my niece, Angie. Mrs. Kidd, very pleased to meet you. Very well, thank you. Howard's not in today, isn't he? He's feeling poorly. I didn't know. I'm sorry to hear that. The fact is, he's in a state of shock about what's happened. What has happened? You should know if anyone. 
I'm referring to you being appointed managing director instead of Howard. He hasn't been at all well all weekend. He hasn't slept for three nights. I haven't slept. I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Kidd. Has he thought of taking sleeping pills? It's very hard when someone has worked all these years. Business life is full of little setbacks. I'm sure Howard knows that. He'll bounce back in a day or two. We all bounce back. If you could see him, you'd know what I'm talking about. What's it going to do to him working for a woman? I think if it was a man, he'd get over it to something normal. I think he's going to have to get over it. It's me that bears the brunt. I'm not the one that's been promoted. I put him first every inch of the way, and now what do I get? You women this, you women that. It's not my fault. You're going to have to be very careful how you handle him. He's very hurt. Naturally, I'll be tactful and pleasant to him. You don't start pushing someone round. I'll consult him over any decisions affecting his department, but that's no different, Mrs. Kidd, from any of my other colleagues. I think it is different because he's a man. I'm not quite sure why you came to see me. I had to do something. Well, you've done it. You've seen me. I think that's probably all we have time for. I'm sorry he's been taking it out on you. He really is a shit, Howard. But he's got a family to support. He's got three children. It's only fair. Are you suggesting I give up the job to him, then? It had crossed my mind if you were unavailable for some reason. He would be the natural second choice, I think, don't you? I'm not asking. Good. You mustn't tell him I came. He's very proud. If he doesn't like what's happening here, he can go and work somewhere else. Is that a threat? I'm sorry, but I do have some work to do. It's not that easy, a man of Howard's age. You don't care. I thought he was going too far, but he's right. You're one of these ball breakers. I'm sorry, but I do have some work to do. You're miserable and lonely. You're not natural. Could you please piss off? I thought if I saw you, at least I'd be doing something. Go do some work now. You come back later. I think you were wonderful. I have to go and do some work now. You told her to piss off. Will you come back later. Can I stay here? Don't you want to go sightseeing? I'd rather stay here. You can stay here, I suppose, if it's not boring. It's where I most want to be in the world. I'll see you later. Is this right? You are Shona? Yeah. So see you're 29. Yeah. Too many late nights, me. So, you've been where you are for four years, Shona. You're earning six basic and three commission. So what's the problem? No problem. Why do you want to change? Just to change. Change of products? Change of area? Both. But you're happy on the road? I like driving. You're not up to management status? I would like management status. You'd be interested in titular management status, but not come off the road. I want to be on the road, yeah. So how many calls have you been making a day? Six. And what proportion of those successful? Six. That's hard to believe. Four. So, you find it easy to get the initial interest, do you? Oh, yeah, I'll get plenty of initial interest. What about closing? I'll close, then I? Because that's what an employer's going to have doubts about with the lady, as I needn't tell you. Whether she's got the guts to push through to a closing situation. They think we're too nice. They think we listen to the buyer's doubts. They think we consider his needs and his feelings. I'll never consider people's feelings. I was selling for six years. I can sell anything. I've sold in three continents, and I'm jolly as they come, but I'm not very nice. I'm not very nice. So what sort of time do you have on the road with the other reps? Get on a ride? Handle the chat? I'll get on. Keep myself to myself. Very much of a learner, are you? Sometimes. So what field are you interested in? Computers. 
That's a top field, as you know. You'll be up against some very slick fellas there. There's some very pretty boys in computers. It's an American-style field. That's why I want to do it. Video systems appeal. That's a high-flying situation. Video systems appeal, okay. Because Press will have half a dozen vacancies we're looking to fill at the moment. We're talking in the area of ten to 15,000 here and upwards. Sounds okay. I have a good mind to go for it myself. <laughs> but it's good money here if you've got the top clients. Could you fancy it, do you think? Work here? I'm not in a position to offer. There's nothing officially going just now. But we're always on the lookout. There's not that many of us. We could keep in touch. I like driving. So the personal appeals? Yeah. What about ties? No ties. So relocation wouldn't be a problem? No problem. So just fill me in a bit more about what you've been doing. What I've been doing? It's all down there. The bare facts are down here, but I've got to present you to an employer. I'm 29 years old. So it says here. We look young. Youngest runs in the family and our family. So just describe your present job for me. My present job? At present, I have a car. I've got a Porsche. I go up the M1 a lot. I burn up the M1 a lot. Straight up the M1 in the fast lane where the clients are. Staffordshire, Yorkshire. I do a lot in Yorkshire. I'm selling electric things like dishwashers, washing machines. Stainless steel tubs are a feature and the reliability of the programme. After sales service, we offer a very good after sales service. Spare parts, plenty of spare parts and fridges. I sell a lot of fridges, especially in the summer. People want to buy fridges in the summer because of the heat melting the butter. And they get fed up standing the milk in a basin of cold water with a cloth over. Which stands the reason people don't want to do that in this day and age. So I sell a lot of them. Big ones with big freezers. Or big freezers. And I stay in hotels at night when I'm away from home on my expense account. I stay in various hotels. They know me the ones I go to. I check in, have a bath, have a shower, go down the bar, have a gin and tonic, have a chat. Then it's in the dining room to have dinner. I usually have fillet steak and mushrooms. I like mushrooms. I like smoked salmon very much, and I like having a salad on the side, a green salad. I don't like tomatoes. Christ, what a waste of time. Beg your pardon? Not a word of this is true, is it? How do you mean? You just filled in the form with a pack of lies. Not exactly. How old are you? Twenty-nine. Nineteen. Twenty-one. What jobs have you done? Have you done any? I could, though. I betcha. Who's sitting in my chair? What? Sorry. Who's been eating my porridge? What? It's all right. I saw Marlene. It's Angie, isn't it? I'm Win, And I'm not going out for lunch because I'm knackered. I'm going to sit me down here and have a yoghurt. Do you like yoghurt? No. That's good, because I've only got one. Are you hungry? No. There's a cafe on the corner. No, thank you. Do you work here? How did you guess? Because you look as if you might work here and you're sitting on the desk. Have you always worked here? No, I was headhunted. That means I was working for another outfit like this, and this lot came along and offered me more money. I broke my contract. There was a hell of a stink. There's not many top ladies about. Your auntie's a smashing bird. Yeah, I know. Fan, are you? Fan of your aunties? Think I could work here? Not at the moment. <laughs> How do I start? What can you do? No, nothing. Type? Not very well. The letters jump up when I do capitals. I was going to do a CSE in commerce, but I didn't. What have you got? What? 
CSEs, O's? Nothing. None of that. Did you do all that? Oh, yeah. All that. And a science degree, funnily enough. I started out doing medical research, but there's no money in it. I thought I'd go abroad. Did you know that they sell Coca-Cola in Russia and Pepsi-Cola in China? You don't have to be qualified as much as you might think. Men are awful bullshitters. They like to make out jobs are harder than they really are. Any job I ever did, I started doing it better than the rest of the crowd, and they didn't like it. So I'd get unpopular and I'd have a drink to cheer myself up. I lived with a fella and supported him for four years. He couldn't get work. After that, I went to California. I like the sunshine. Americans know how to live. This country's too slow. Then I went to Mexico, still in sales, but it's no country for a single lady. I came home. Went bonkers for a bit. Thought I was five different people. Got over that all right. The psychiatrist said I was perfectly sane and highly intelligent. Got married in a moment of weakness. He's inside now. Been inside four years. And I've not been to see him too much this last year. I like this better than sales. I'm not really that aggressive. I started thinking sales was a good job if you want to meet people. But you're meeting people that don't want to meet you. It's no good if you like being liked. Here your clients want to meet you because you're the one doing them some good. They hope. You're talking to yourself, sunshine. So, what's new? Who's this? Marlene's little niece. What's she got? Brother, sister? She never talks about a family. I was telling her my life story. Violins? No, success story. You heard Howard's had a heart attack. No, when? I heard just now. He hadn't come in. He was at home. He's gone to hospital. He's not dead. His wife was here. She just rushed off in a cab. Too much butter, too much smoke. We must send him some flowers. You've heard about Howard? Of course so. Lucky he didn't get the job if that's what his health's like. Is she asleep? She wants to work here. Pack her in Tesco, more like. She's a nice kid, isn't she? She's a bit thick. She's a bit funny. She thinks you're wonderful. She's not going to make it. Just a few little things. You're so nice. I've no memory for birthdays, have I? And Christmas seems to slip by, so I think I owe Angie a few presents. What you say? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Auntie Marley. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, Mum, isn't it lovely? I don't know if it's the right size. She's grown up isn't since I saw her. I knew she was always tall for her age. Big lamb. Hold it up, Angie. Let's see. Well, put on, shall I? Yes, try it on. Go on to your room, then. We do of course I've got in my room. Thing. What do you yeah. think? Oh, look, Mum. Here's something for you. Open it. Go on. What is it? Can I open it for you? Would you open it, Pear? Don't you want to open it yourself? Go on. You can do it. Something hard. What is it? <laughs> Bottle. Drink, is it? No. Oh. A few look. What a lot. Open it. Look. Let's smell it. Oh, it's strong. It's lovely. Put it on me. How do you do it? Put it on me. You're too young. I can play wearing it like dressing and up. You're too old for that. Here, I'll do it. You'll tip your bottle of yourself. We'll have you smell. Put it on you. Do I smell? Put it on Auntie too. Put it on Auntie too. <laughs> 
Let's all I smell. I don't know what you'd like. <laughs> they enjoyed have it already. Now we all smell the same. It's very kind of you, Marlene. You shouldn't. Now I'll put the dress on. And then we'll see. You caught me on the heart with a place in a mess. You let me know you was coming. I'd got something in to eat. We had our dinner dinner time. We're just going to have a cup of tea. You could have an egg. No, I'm not hungry. Tea's fine. I don't expect you take sugar. Why not? You take care of yourself. How do you mean you didn't know I was coming? You could have written. I oh, know we're not on the phone, but we're not completely in the dark ages. Did you you do asked have me a to postman. come. Postman, how did I ask you to come? Angie said when she phoned up. Angie phoned up, did she? Was it just Angie's idea? What did she say? She said uh, you wanted me to come and see you. It was a couple of weeks ago. How was I to know that's a ridiculous idea? My diary's always full a couple of weeks ahead, so we fixed it for this weekend. I was meant to get here earlier, but I was held up. She gave me messages from you. Didn't you wonder why I didn't phone you myself? She said you don't like using the phone. You're shy on the phone and can't use it. I don't know what you're like, do I? Are there people who can't use the phone? I expect so. Well, I haven't met any. Why should I think she was lying? Because she's like what she's like. How do I know what she's like? I thought you don't know what she's like. You never come and see her. Well, I have now, and Ooh. you don't seem over the moon. Well, I'd have got a cake if she told me. I did wonder why you wanted to see me. I didn't want to see you. Yes, I know. Shall I go? I don't mind seeing you. Great. I you feel really welcome. You can come and see Angie any time you like. I'm not stopping you. You're the one ever so. away. I'm right here where I was. And we'll be a few years yet. I shouldn't wonder. All right. All right. Tea. Sugar. <laughs> Very quiet down here. But you notice it. Yeah, smells different too. That's the scent. No, I mean walking down the lane. What sort of are you getting in London then? Oh, very pretty. You do. Pretty, pretty it's all right. Do you like the colour? Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Better take it off. You're going to I want to wear it. I want to wear it. It's for wearing after all. You can't just hang it up and look at it. I love it. Well, if you must, you must. Someone asked me what's my favourite colour. I'll tell them it's this. <laughs> Thank you very much, Auntie Marlene. You didn't tell your mum. You asked me down. I, I want it to be a surprise. I'll give you a surprise one of these days. I thought you'd like to see a champagne since I was nine. People do say there aren't. Is it that long? Doesn't time fly? I wanted to. Not cross. Are you glad? Oh, I smell nicer in here, do not I? <laughs> I think it was a good idea, Angie. About time. <clears throat> we are sisters after all. It's a pity to let that go. <laughs> This is Kitty, you lives down the road. This Present. is Angie. Do you like it? Lane. It's all right. Hello, Kitty. You coming out? No. What's that smell? It's a present. It's 
horrible. Come on. How are you? I'm busy. Coming out later? No. <coughs> Hello. This little girl Angie sometimes plays with because she's the only child who lives really close. She's like a little sister to her, really. Angie's very good with little children. Do you want to work with children, Angie? I don't Are you a teacher or a nursery nurse? What do you want to do? She has no idea in her head what Angie. she wants to do. Lucky to get anything. She's not clever like you. I'm not clever, just pushy. True enough. I don't drink spirits. You do at Christmas. It's not Christmas, is it? It's better than Christmas. Glasses? Or just a small one in. Do you want to try some, Angie? Oh, I can't, can I? You taste it if you want. You won't like it. got drunk together the night your grandfather died. We did not get drunk. I got drunk. You were just overcome with grief. <laughs> Still keep up the grove with flowers. Do you really? Why wouldn't I? Have you seen Mother? Of course I've seen Mother. I mean lately. Of course I've seen her lately. I go every Thursday. Do you remember your grandfather? He got me out the bath one night in the towel. Did he? I don't think he ever gave me a bath. Did he give you a bath, Joyce? Probably got soft in his old age. Did you like him? Yes, of course. Why? What? So, what's the news? How's Mrs. Paisley? Who's Mrs. Paisley? Paisley? And Dorothy. <laughs> what happened to Dorothy? Well, she went to Canada. Did she? What to do? I don't know, she just went to Canada. Well, good for Mr. Connolly killed his wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Connolly at wife gate? I found her body in the garden oh. under the cabbages. He was always so proper. Stack up, get Connolly. Best lawyer money could buy. He couldn't get out of it. She was carrying on with Matthew. How old was Matthew then? Twenty-one. Uh, I think he's about six. I think he's six. He's six years older than me. If he was six, I'd be born just she this minute. I'd be so nothing. She's been if she's forgotten about Matthew. You were here for my birthday when I was nine. I had a pink cake. <laughs> Kit was only five then. Oh, she was four. <laughs> she could read already when she went to school. She hadn't started school. Do you remember my birthday? Yes, I Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Yes, I remember you. And Mum and Dad was there, and Kit was. Yes, how is your dad? Where is he tonight? Up the pub? He's not here. I can see he's not here. He moved out. What? When did he? Just recently. Didn't you know it that? You don't know much. Well, don't be rude, Angie. I'm not. Am I, Auntie? What else don't you know? He was in America or somewhere. You sent a postcard. I've got that in my room. It's the Grand Canyon. I can get it for you. Do you want to see it? Shall I get it? Yes, all right. You could be married with twins for all I know. You must have affairs and break up, and I don't need to know any of that, so I don't see what the fuss is about. What fuss? Driving across the States for a new job in L.A. It's a long way, but the car goes very fast. It's very hot. Wish you were here. Love from Auntie Marlene. Did you make a lot of money? I spent a lot. I won't go to America. Will you take me? Not going to America. She's been to America, stupid. She might go again, stupid. It's not something you do once. People who go keep going all the time. They go back and forth on jets. They go on Concord and Laker and get jet lag. 
Will you take me? I'm not planning a trip. Will you let me know? And you get silly. I want the American. I'm your in bed. No, it's not. I have to go oh, to bed at all morning. tonight. I'll wake up. Oh, no, you know how you get. How do I get? I'm just going to Are you staying the night? Yes, if that's all right. I'll you can see have you in the my morning. bed. I'll sleep on the sofa. You will not. You'll sleep in your bed. Mom. I'll just see you going to sleep outside. I would. I would go to sleep. I love that. I'm going to get. Cross, and Jay. I won't show us something. Then bed. Then I expect it's in your room, so off you go. Give us a shout when you're ready for bed. Your auntie be up to see you. Will you? Yes, of course. Tonight. Will you be all right on the sofa? You can have my spine. Yes, forecast said rain tonight, but it's held off. I was going to take a walk down to the estuary, but I left it a bit late. Is it just the same? I cut down the hedges a few years back. Is that since you were here? It's not changed down the end, all the mud and the reeds. We used to pick them when they were bigger than us. <laughs> Are they still lapwings? Gets strange as walking there on a Sunday. I expect they're looking at the mud and the lapwings. Yes. <laughs> you could have left. Who says I wanted to leave? Stop getting at me then, you're really boring. How could I have left? Did you want to? I said how, how could if I? If you wanted to, you'd have done it. <laughs> Christ. Are we getting drunk? Do you want something to eat? No, I'm getting drunk. <laughs> Funny time to visit Sunday evening. I came up this morning and spent the day at Ipswich. Auntie! I went... Auntie Molly! Better go. Go on then. Alright. So what's the secret? It's a secret. 
I'll know what it is anyway. I bet you don't. You always said that. It's a exercise book. Yes, but you don't know what's in it. Some game, some secret society she has with Kit. You don't know the password, you don't know the code. Ooh, you're really in it, aren't you? Can you do the handshake? She didn't mention a handshake. <sighs> I thought we'd have a special handshake. She spends hours right in there, but she's useless at school. Copies things out of books about black magic and politicians out of the paper. It's a bit childish. I think it's a plot to take over the world. You've been in the remedial class last two years. I came up this morning and spent the day at Ipswich. I went to see Mother. Did she recognise you? Are you trying to be funny? No, she does wander. She wasn't wandering at all. She was very lucid, thank you. You were very lucky then. Fucking awful life she's had. Don't tell me. Fucking waste. Don't talk to me. Why shouldn't I talk? Why shouldn't I talk to you? Look, Isn't she my left. mother You've too? You've gone away. We can do I left you. home. So what? I left home. People do leave home. We it's understand normal. understand that. We can do without you. We were. Happy, were you happy? Don't come back. So it's just your mother, is it? Your child. You never wanted me around. Oh, you we were go. jealous of me because I was the little one and I was clever. Well, not clever enough for all this psychology. Why That's can't I visit is. my own family without oh, all this? Just don't go on about Mum's life when you haven't been to see her for how many years? It's up to me. I'll go and see her every week. Then don't go and see her every week. Somebody else do. No, they don't. Why How do they? I feel if I didn't go? I look better. I hope you feel better. It's up to me. You couldn't get out of here fast enough. Of course I couldn't get out of here fast enough. What was I going to do? Marry a dairy man who'd come home pissed, Christ. don't you? Fucking this, fucking that, fucking bitch, fucking tell me what to fucking do, fucking. I don't know how you could leave your own child. You were quick enough to take her. What does that mean? You were quick enough to take her. Or what? Have her put in a home? Have some strange to take her, would you, you rather? I didn't know that. Then. Like hell. I like didn't three know years. that plenty of people take well, that Well, it long. turned out lucky for you, didn't well, it? It turned out all right for you, by the look of you. You'd be getting a few less thousand a year. Not necessarily. You'd be stuck here, I like have you taken said. taken her with me. You didn't want to take her with you. It's no good coming back now, Marlene. I know a managing director who's got two children. She breastfeeds in the boardroom. She pays £100 a week on domestic help alone. And she can afford to do that because she's an extremely high-powered lady earning a great deal of money. So what's that got to do with you at the age of 17? Just because you were married and had somewhere to live. You could have lived at home. Don't or live stupid. with me and Frank. You, you said you suggested. weren't keeping it. You shouldn't have had it. If Here you we go. You was the most stupid for You so wanted clever. it. You said you, you were the most stupid. I remember the day you said, pregnant, I'm glad you never got rid of it. Oh, look hard. You said that down by the river, so what are you saying, sunshine? You don't want to. Of course I'm not saying that. Because I'll take her, wake you her up and You wouldn't know how to begin now. to look after Don't her. Don't you want her? Yes, I do. She's my child. Then what are you going you on said about? I'm Why did I you I you said you have were a child now. If you to... want one, you could, you not. Oh, I might do. Good. I've been on the pill so long. Listen, when Andrew was off. six months old, I did get pregnant. And I lost it because I was so tired looking after your fucking baby you because she me. cried so much. Yes, I did tell you. Well, I forgot. And the doctor said if I'd sat down all day with my feet up, I'd have kept it. I've had And that's abortions. the only chance I've ever had because well, after I that... It wasn't a problem. I don't like messy talk about blood. And if I hadn't so had your baby, I don't be the doctor a baby. Said. I don't want to talk about gynecology. Then stop trying to get Angie off of me! I can't. 
come down here after six years? All night you've been saying I don't come down often enough. If I don't come for another six years, she'll be 21. Will that be okay? That would be fine, yes. Yeah. Six years would suit me fine. I was afraid of this. I only came because I thought you were... <sighs> I just would. Don't grizzle, Marlene, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, Marlene, come <laughs> on, Pat. I love you, really. <laughs> Will you? Don't let me cry like it. I knew I'd cry if I wasn't careful. Everyone's always crying in this house. Nobody takes any notice. <laughs> You've been wonderful looking after Angie. Don't be carried away. I can't write letters, but I do think of you. <laughs> I'm getting drunk. <laughs> I'm going to make some tea. Love you. See why you'd want to leave. It's a dumpy. So what's this about you and Frank? He was always carrying on, wasn't he? And if I wanted to go out in the evening anywhere, he'd go mad, even if it was nothing, a class. I was going to go to an evening class. <laughs> So he had this girlfriend, only 22, poor cow. And I said, go on, off you go up it. I don't think he even likes her. So what about money? I've always said I don't want your money. No, does he send you money? I've got four different cleaning jobs, heads up. There's not a lot round here. Does Angie miss him? She doesn't say. Does she see him? He was never that fond of her, to be honest. He tried to kiss me once. <laughs> when you were engaged. <laughs> Did you fancy him? No, he looked like a fish. He was lovely <laughs> then. <laughs> well, I fancied him. <laughs> About three years. <laughs> Have you got someone else? There's not a lot round here. Mind you, the minute you were on your own, you'd be amazed how your friend's husband's dropped by. <laughs> I'll soon you do without. I don't see why you couldn't take my money. I do, so don't bother about it. I've only got to ask. So, what about you? Good job. Good for a laugh. Good for more than Got a back laugh. Got the US of a a bit wiped out and slotted into this speedy employment agency and still there. So you can always find yourself work then. That's right. <laughs> a man? Mm, there's always men. No one special? That's fellas who like to be seen with a high-flying lady. 
shows they've got something really good in their pants. <laughs> but they can't take the day to day. They're waiting for me to turn into the little woman. <laughs> or maybe I'm just horrible, of course. Oh, Nader! Oh, Nader! <laughs> well, I do. But I need adventures more, so on on into the sunset. I think the eighties are going to be stupendous. Oh, for? For me, I think I'm going oh, up, for up, you, up. yes, I'm sure they will. And for the country, too, come to that. Get the economy back on its feet and whoosh! She's a tough lady, Maggie. I'd give her a job. You she just it needs to day, hang in there. You? This country needs to stop whining. Monetarism is not it. stupid. It takes time, determination, no more slow. Well, I think they're filthy Who's going to drive it on? First woman prime minister. Terrific oasis. Well, right on. First woman, if you must have it it you to buy Hitler. If he was a woman, Mers Hitler got a lot done. Hitler ain't a great well, event. Still Cheers. walking on the workers' faces, still Dada's little parrot. Haven't you learned to think for yourself? I believe in the individual. Look at me. I am looking at you. Come on, Joyce. I'm not going to quarrel over politics. We are, though. Forget I mentioned it. Not a word about the slimy unions will cross my lips. You say mother had a wasted life. Yes, I do, married to that bastard. What sort of life did he have? Working in the like life. an animal. Why wouldn't he Off want a drink? You want a drink? He couldn't afford whiskey. I don't want to talk about him. When you started, I was talking about her. She had a rotten life because she had nothing. She went hungry. She went hungry because he drank the money. That's not all damn he used to hit her. Her. Lives were rubbish. She didn't they were hit treated him. like rubbish. He's dead and she'll die soon. And what sort of life did they I have? I saw him once. I came down. You think I didn't? They didn't get I to America and dreams. drive across in a fast America, car. Bad night. Nice. They have bad I had to get out. I knew when I was 13. Out of their house. Out of them, never let that happen to me. Jealous never of what let you've done. Make my You're own ashamed way of me. If I come to your office, you smart friends, wouldn't you? I'm ashamed of you. Think of nothing but yourself. You've got on. Nothing's changed for most people, I has it? I hate the working class, which yes, is what you're going to go on about now. It doesn't exist anymore. It means lazy and stupid. Come on. I don't now like we're getting it. I don't like beer guts and football vomit and saucy tits. I'm spit when I see sisters. our Rolls Royce scratch. It was oh, my ring. Mercedes, it was. I ate the cows I worked And I will not dirty be brought down to their level. By a flying, flying picket, and I will not be sent to Siberia no, or you'll you'll be on a yacht just because I'm a rich and all that. And you wait, the eighties is going to be stupendous, all right? Because we're getting you not off our backs. Warming up his map, and I want to be free in a free world. What? I know what, what? I mean by so that. So don't be round here when it happens, because if someone's kicking you, I'll just laugh. I don't mean anything personal. I don't believe in class. Anyone can do anything if they've got what it takes. And if they haven't, if they're lazy or stupid or frightened, I'm not going to help them get a job. Why should I? What about Angie? What about Angie? She's stupid, lazy, and frightened. So what about her? You run her down too much. She'll be all right. I don't expect so, no. I expect her children will say what a wasted life she had, if she has children. Because nothing's changed. And it won't with them in. Them. Them. Us and you're and one of them. And you're us. Wonderful us. And Angie's us. Yes, and that's and right. Us. And you're them. Come on, Joyce. I 
for the night. You've got what it takes. I know I've. I didn't really mean all that. I did. But we're friends anyway. I don't think so. No. It's lovely to be out in the country. I really must make the effort to come more often. I want to go to sleep. Go to sleep. Night then. I hope you'll be warm enough. Right. Joyce. No pet. Sorry. What's the matter? Mom? No, she's gone to bed. It's Auntie Marlene. Right, then. Did you have a bad dream? What happened in it? Well, 
you're awake now, aren't you, Pet? Frightening. <laughs>